Thanks for joining me here. Um, I wanted to go over a number of things with you all who will be precepting and acting as uh, field training officers for employees in Wichita and with and Winfield. Um, <clears throat> first thing I wanted to talk about was our um, pay uh, deferential for FTOs. So today, and today is April the 22nd, as of today, um, you get a differential every time you have a third rider on your ship. So for that day, you'll have a 5% differential telestaff code 087 for you supervisors doing telestaff. Um, that'll be applied to uh, that daily shift. So you'll get a 5% increase for that shift. Now, in, this, in the soon future, uh, Jay Curlis, my FTO program supervisor, and myself will be doing interviews uh, with uh, uh, applicants for the FTO for a permanent differential, which would be 5% permanently applied to your uh, pay rate uh, as long as you are performing uh, in the FTO program. So, that, and so hopefully that clears some things up for you. So as of today, 5% um, added to the shifts that you have third riders. And in the near future, um, after interviews and after um, some laying out of our expectations of the program, uh, there will be a permanent differential applied to your status as a field training officer. So have that to look forward to. So now kind of jumping into our book. For some of you, this will look familiar. Uh, my Wichita folks who just went through your new hire in February. Um, this will look somewhat familiar, although it's been tailored and it will change again in the future. So I'll have to delete this video and make a new one. Um, and obviously, you guys, if you see things that are um, either can be done better or more, efficient, more efficiently, um, please let me know and we'll work on those and change those. This is not set in stone. This is where we're starting. It's where we've landed at for our second month in service of Wichita and, you know, my uh, just starting to, to be CES over Winfield as well. So this is all new um, and it is, it's still fresh and moldable. So, all right. So this first few pages. Um, is really just reference for um, the new hire. Um, it has some things that are kind of some frequently asked stuff, like the Okta portal, um, how to get into the different GR, uh, GMR sites, the clock in, clock out through Kronos, um, how to schedule yourself in Telestaff, uh, what workday is, and how to get into uh, success factors. All right. Kind of general overview here, general introduction. Sorry for my emails popping up. You can hear that in the background. Um, so yeah, so you can have these, this for reference if your uh, new hire has questions that you can't answer, which you guys should be pretty familiar with this whole process, but you know, as an op, but it can also be for your reference too, in case there's something you haven't done. I know sometimes full-time employees uh, forget how to pick up shifts or don't know how to pick up shifts because they've never been in that place where they have to pick up uh, shifts for their schedule. It's just set for them. So this will be for your reference so you can tell the new hires how to do those things. All right, moving on to this next section. This is uh, 2.0, the self-evaluation. So I want our new hires to fill this out on their first day with you. Um, just take that first part of your beginning of shift after you've kind of gone over the truck and showed them how we check out the truck, that process. After you do that, just sit with them and ask them to fill out this orientation self-evaluation. So just tell that tell lists you for you uh, their strengths and weaknesses, things that um, you can work on with them, and just kind of gives you a better understanding of where they're at, what their history is, all that uh, info would be really really useful for you. All right, this next section is going to be our checklist for all providers. You can disregard this first credential verification form. I use this during the academy um, to, especially when I have bigger groups, to see what our deficits are as far as um, certifications. Um, if there's any blind spots where we didn't see that, hey, they don't have their CPR card on uh, whenever we interviewed, uh, this just is my double check to make sure that all that stuff is in place. So you don't have to um, worry about this. This is just for me. Um, Moving on to the other checklists. So this first one's gonna be PCR documentation. Um, your new hires are gonna be writing reports in meds. And so this is your chance to um, 
uh, as well as coaching them through their different PCRs. You can also document that coaching here in the PCR documentation checklist. Um, so check it as it is completed, right? So once they've uh, properly completed a PCR, um, then you can check, select complete. Uh, we don't have to fill this out for every PCR that's done, uh, but just as they uh, progress through their third rider phase, um, you'll check completed on all these different sections here. Um, and obviously, if you have questions about some of these things, like define DNR orders, if you have questions about DNR or advanced directives, this is a great moment for you to reach out to um, your supervisors or to me um, about to clarify those things for you. Um, often, I think the saying is, that, uh, you know, uh, when one teaches to learn, that's the case whenever you become an FTO, is that all of a sudden you have these new hires asking you questions about things that you always took it for granted. Um, so it's a real opportunity for you to grow as a as a provider, um, just having a new hire asking you those wonderful questions. All right, this next page here is going to be our radios and communications. I want to teach the new hires how to use the radios, how to give a biocom to the ED. I know for um, our IFT operations, uh, Kansas City, uh, Winfield, Wichita, you guys aren't going into the or dropping off in the ED that often but you do do it on occasion. Um, so we wanna make sure that um, our folks know how to use the mounted radio, both in the truck and also the portable radio. Now, Zoll Respond has changed uh, a lot of this as far as we don't have as much communication on the radio as we used to just a week ago, um, but we still want them to be able to function on the radio, know what proper radio etiquette is, um, know that you know sassiness or unprofessional talk on the radio is not appropriate because um, it can be a slippery slope and something that can really drag down culture um, if that slips in. So we want to lay the, lay the line down that that's not acceptable for us here. Uh, but also just the practical, how to change the channels, how to change the zones, all that stuff. And again, for all these, you're going to sign and then, uh, excuse me, you'll sign, and then your trainee is going to sign as well, and date it, and then print your name down at the bottom. So next is stair chair. Um, you guys do have stair chairs on the trucks. Uh, again, I know they're not used all that often, but we want them to be able to function with it uh, if in case it is they are called upon to access it. So again, this happens in Kansas City a little bit more often. We take patients home um, or they take patients home uh, on discharges frequently. So we use the stair chair to get in to uh, build into houses, which is actually more difficult than getting out of houses if you've ever done it. Um, but uh, we want to be familiar with that. So these are, again, just the striker. This is straight from a striker, uh, the manufacturer checklist of, hey, these are the things that are possible with your um, striker stair chair. And to make you aware of that, so you can check off the, the trainee on that. Next one down is going to be the stretcher. Again, this is also by striker, just the manufacturer checklist. Uh, make sure that we go through all of these things. Um, on what what options you have on each striker cot. This is the manufacturer. Also, a quick note, I didn't. I just realized that I haven't gone over this for you. So all these evaluation methods, um, they do have acronyms and the, the key for it is up here. So RD stands for return demonstration, meaning that you show them uh, the trainee how to do it and then they do it themselves, right? CS stands for case studies. So this is where we show um, the new hire a case study and then uh, uh, have them uh, kind of explain to, or repeat back to us what we've shown them on that case study. Um, and peer review, mock survey. So that's not, you don't see that very often, um, but, but, uh, but anyway, let's <laughs> all so kind of glance over it here. Uh, discussion group, uh, this is wherever you just talk about it as a, as a truck, um, talk about that element and that can be the checkoff or evaluation method. They have self-assessment and then a post-test, observation of daily work, examples of presentation and CQI monitoring. So for most often we're gonna be doing this return demonstration and then occasionally you'll see the discussion group is kind of two most common ones that we'll use. You can see that here. All right, so going down here we have scoop stretcher. Similar to the stair chair, um, we just want you to know how to use it, how to function with it, so that if when you do get into that situation where you do have to use it, 
um, that you won't look uh, incompetent, right? So we want to make sure that all our new hires have that just basic understanding of the scoop structure. Portable suction. Again, all these are going to be return demonstrations, how to turn on the unit, etc. Glucometer. CPAP, that's important. So the indications for CPAP and contraindications for CPAP. Um, and for our medics, um, uh, show them how to use the CPAP and the PSV. Obviously, they're going to see that whenever you go through the ventilators. Um, but this can also be a good checkout for just the PSV or CPAP setting on your ventilators, the Revels. Superglottic airway. So for the uh, return demonstration on these, um, right now we don't have an airway mannequin available there for you guys at Wesley um, in Winfield. If you do, then that's a great time for you to be able to return the demonstration. I'm, I'm not, uh, off the top of my head, I'm not sure what our resources are down there for demonstration. But otherwise we can talk about it. The Superglock Airway, uh, <clears throat> your EMTs are gonna have that exposure in their classes most often, but we wanna make sure that they're familiar with what we carry in each operation. All right, and that's it. So this is the that was the checklist for all providers. So regardless of your uh, their level, EMT or paramedic, they should go through this checklist. This next checklist, 3.1, is for just ALS providers. So ALS meaning uh, paramedics and and sometimes AEMTs. So we want advanced, obviously going over this EKG acquisition. Um, and some other points, but they won't be going over, they won't be checking off on the ventilator um, uh, procedure or the intubation procedure. So EKG acquisition, how to apply the 12 lead, um, and a good thought, and I may, I may do this in future and tell me if you think it's a good idea, but I, I'm gonna probably add this to the checklist for all providers, since we do frequently have our EMTs that are placing EKGs, right? Not uncommon at all. Easy IO. Intubation equipment. And narcotic access procedures. Um, so you guys do have a narcotics log. We want to make sure those things are um, done correctly. If you see some points that are different on here, um, please let me know. Uh, I can change it up as we need to. Uh, this is, again, built for, for Kansas City, so that's what I'm um, using it for. Uh, but the process is a little bit different uh, in your operations. Please let me know, and I can tailor it for, for you guys. Then lastly here, the ventilator equipment. So um, the checkoffs for it will, for you guys will just be for the Revell. Um, and these are the, the notes here. So you can see um, it's pretty short for ventilator. We spend a lot of time on ventilator, and I say a lot. We spend at least two or three hours on ventilator in the academy with advanced providers. So I think it's important. And they also have success factors training on it as well. Um, so again, this is just the practical, how do we set up the tubing, make sure they know how to do that portion of it. This doesn't go into the theory of it, although uh, I very much welcome that discussion on the truck. Um, tell them about the patients that you've had that have been difficult, ventilator patients, how you manage them, give those war stories, all that stuff here. Um, uh, I have a lot of uh, advanced providers. This is their um, kind of their scarier procedure that we do on the IFT side. Uh, so we want to make sure that they're familiar and they're confident whenever they go out uh, and start to work on their own. Okay, so this next page um, is your daily shift evaluation. So this should be completed for every shift that they have. I think in this last book, we only printed one and that was uh, that was my, my error in not specifying that. Uh, but we wanna have one of these complete on every shift that they have. And obviously the demographic kind of info up here for the trainee and the FTO. We wanna keep track of how many shifts they're on um, especially for if we do ever run into a situation where we have a, a new hire that's, you know, getting into the larger number of shifts that they've been on. We want to be able to, to uh, one, be able to count those shifts, but two, see the progression or regression um, based on the advancing number here, right? So if they're still getting one, or if they were getting twos in shift number one, 
and now they're getting ones in shift number six, well, that's a real problem, right? And we're able to trim that uh, really nicely if you make sure to record that number. All right. Um, so real quick point on the grading. Uh, so we either have meet standard, needs work, or not being the standard. I try to make the scoring very simple. Um, I know on a lot of score sheets, there's like a five and asking folks, well, like, what's the difference between a four and a five? There's not really a clear answer. It's like, you know, exceeds expectation or greatly exceeds expectation or whatever it is. Um, so I try to make it a little bit more simple where either they met our expectation or they didn't, right? Um, uh, and so a three, they met the expectation. You know, if you weren't there, they would have done it. Uh, needs work. This uh, means, hey, they... Uh, they need some prompting on getting this done, or maybe they need some prompting on their attitude or demeanor, you know, whatever. And then lastly, we have not meaning, meaning, or not meeting, meaning um, they just didn't do it even after you already talked to them about it, and they're still not doing that correctly, right? All right, <clears throat> so for most of our new hires, they're going to be in this two to start out with, right? And it's not until the later shifts that they're going to either regress to a one or most likely advance here to a three. Um, some notes on emergency driving. They may not get that exposure during their rides. I'm um, just depending on what patients you get. Uh, and, the, and geography and mapping, obviously not as big a concern um, in the IFT since we're just going between, uh, you know, some readily identifiable hospitals as opposed to the, all the cross streets and stuff that you'd have to know for a 911 system. So I got these asterisks next to them there. So if they don't, if, if you didn't drive emergent, then you can just go ahead and leave this blank and check mark the not applicable. Now, same thing for the geography and maps. All right, uh, part two here is gonna be the scene management. So communication, personal approach. This is very important um, when dealing with the hospital staff. We really want to um, foster a professional attitude with the hospital staff. There are partners um, and People in general do a good job with treating the, the patient with respect and dignity. It's sometimes um, the other providers that are on scene that we um, can either lose our patients with or, or whatever. Um, but anyway, we want to make sure that we're having a personal approach, that we speak openly, um, that we can be candid, but we do it in a professional way, right? So coworkers, outside agencies, patient family, uh, that your radio work is appropriate and the hospital staff down here too. Patient assessment, so that we're always doing a primary survey. Um, we're getting that verbal report from the nurse. It's a part of our primary survey in the IFT setting. The initial assessment, physical exam, that those are done appropriately for each patient. Uh, focus history, um, a differential diagnosis, although we're not, we're not having to dig in too deep on the diagnosis on our IFT patients, because that's been identified for us. Um, but what this can mean is, hey, are we asking the right questions uh, to properly uh, monitor and stabilize this patient en route if they were to deteriorate, right? Um, so we're asking the, you know, the not surface questions, the kind of deeper questions of what this patient might need. So EKG interpretation, that's correct. Uh, patient management, that our treatments are correct. IV technique, um, if you have to start another line, uh, that is correct. Again, if, if these things aren't done, you can select the NA for that, uh, for that, um, category for that day. All right, and then lastly, this documentation piece, which we have that documentation check off, but also just as a double check, uh, you're gonna be reviewing their PCRs for every call and making sure that it's uh, well done. Protocol knowledge, quick note on this. I do have a protocol test coming out for you guys in Success Factors. It is an open resource test, so not too scary and untimed. So um, you should be, should be able to do well on it, but it's our, uh, It'll be our first installment of our protocol test and more to follow. Um, be aware of our signature policy. So we want to have a destination signature. We want to have a, a patient signature as well. And also a signature of any um, other riders we had in the truck or other providers in the truck. Training documents, face sheet, or in Winfield, face sheet and a PCS. And then also your EKG tracings. All right. So that's your daily shift evaluation. Like I said, one of these completed for every shift that they're on. This next page is just a reference page again. 
So for radio traffic going into service, um, just how to do that. Sometimes uh, with our newer providers, this can be a little bit of a, a scary thing. Um, and so having this page we've found to be helpful in Kansas City just to you know, demystify it a bit. And also our narrative standards. So um, remember we like to use a SOAP um, format, <coughs> but an abbreviated SOAP format. So subjective and plan are the two most important things. These are all the things that should be included in your subjective. And these are all the things that should be included in your plan. All right, next to last here, we have our field training officer evaluation form. So this is for your trainee to fill out about you, the FTO. Um, and I encourage them in Academy to be candid. We go through these books as well in Academy, so it's not new to them. Um, I encourage them to be candid and professional, um, but we really don't want to take this stuff uh, too personally, but we want to take all criticism as a, you know, an avenue to grow. I had a you know, one of my mentors in life told me that, you know, criticism, that companies pay big money for consultants to tell them, you know, millions of dollars sometimes for consultants to tell them what they're doing wrong. And a critic is just giving the, you that advice for free. So I try to take that into everything I do. And also you should take that uh, here that if your uh, trainee has some things that are you know less than glowing about you, um, don't take it personal, but Take that, take that and, you know, evaluate it, see what's useful about it and move forward and grow from it, right? Most often what I found is that trainees are really, um, they really grow. If, you, if you're a good and amiable FTO, then they're really going to give you some glowing remarks and, and uh, tell you how much they like you as a person, which that's always great to see, right? You can take those personal, right? The, the, uh, the compliments you can take personal, the criticism, you know, leave that, leave that, uh, that's just a business critique. <laughs> Lastly, here we have your 7.0, which is the release. Um, so we have two options for release. Uh, one is the continuation with their orientation program. So meaning, hey, I've, uh, I've had this, um, trainee for a couple of shifts now, I think they probably need a few more shifts. And the second is the captain interview and book evaluation, meaning they are ready to go. Um, I just need to have uh, their book scanned in and sent to me, um, me as in Hunter. So whenever you're done, uh, whenever they've completed all their stuff and their, their skills checks and their daily evals, all that stuff, scan and send those to me. Um, and I will, I will put that into their P file. Um, Captain interview, that's what we have again here in Kansas City. Uh, we haven't established anything like that in Wesley or Winfield yet, uh, but really all that interview is, is a final check to say, hey, these are sometimes the blind spots of your program. Were these things covered for you? Uh, so we don't have that in place in Wesley, but um, I'd like to set that up in the near future. All right, so that's your book, right? So I sent out an email um, last week um, just outlining kind of our general timeline. So uh, the first week is always going to be your academy week for the new hire. Um, some of you are involved with that if you're EVOC instructors uh, or if you came in for, uh, you know, Tempest Monitor training, Clayton. Um, and then Taylor and Chris, you guys came in for the EVOC, uh, which is, which is what, exactly what we want. You guys did a great job. Uh, and we'll continue that. Uh, but anyway, that's your week. That's the new hire week one. And then weeks two through four ish um, are your third rider phase. And so Brian's been working to schedule those out and tell staff for Wesley and then Chantel for for uh, for Winfield. Um, the third rider phase can be a bit longer, um, just depending upon their their availability. Right. So full time. Uh, employee will be picking up a lot of shifts because they have that 40 hour requirement or whatever, uh, you know, whatever their shift schedule is going to be. Uh, so they pick those up uh, all in that first week and they may be done with their orientation in one, two weeks. Uh, but some of our part time folks, if they're only picking up once, you know, once a week, once every other week, then their orientation can stretch on a little bit. So uh, just be aware of that. You can have some people that kind of uh, are going to take longer than others. Um, also, what plays a role in that is just ex previous experience. So if they're an experienced provider, they've done IFT even in the same market. So some of the folks folks we 
on board that have previously worked at Sedgwick. They've done these calls before for Wesley. They may onboard much quicker, so uh, we don't have a set number of patient contacts that we need uh, providers to have. It's just a uh, level of confidence and making sure that we get all of our skills uh, checklist completed. All right, so that's all I got. I kept you for just under 30 minutes. Um, so thank you for sitting through this whole video. Um, if you have questions, please email me, jordan.jones at gmr.net, or you can call me or text me. My number is 913-523-6257. All right. Thanks, guys.